Hi there, I'm Nidhi Johnny, Wireless LAN Technical Marketing Engineer, and in this video, we will see how we can troubleshoot a group in AOS 10. As shown previously, one can monitor a group in Aruba Central and see all servers available to a client device. Now, let's go over some of the CLI commands that we can use to troubleshoot a group. You can use Aruba Central Tools section to run the commands on the APs. So, go to Tools and select commands choose the ap that you want to run the commands on and under categories select air group and then you can see all the commands that are available for air group so you can select which all commands you want to run from here and then you can run them all at once for example, I will select these commands. So show air group user, air group status. Then we will check the disallowed roles, all roles which are disallowed and all VLANs which are disallowed. And then click on add and all the commands will come up here. Next, you can just click on run. You can see that the commands are still running on the AP. And now you can see that it's done. So you can see the output of all the commands that we added. You can see the iPad and the phone connected over here and you can see the details. Uh, you can also see the disallowed roles and the disallowed VLANs and air group status. All right, so this is one way to run the air group commands on the AP. Now I'm going to directly access the AP CLI and run some of the air group commands that will help us in troubleshoot air group in detail. So click on console. Under new session, select the AP you want to run the commands on. So this can be the AP where the server is connected or where the client device is connected. Type in the username and password and create new session. And we are in. So first of all, let's check the status of air group on the AP. So show air group status. Here you can see the status of air group service on the AP. You can see that air group is enabled for MDNS and DLNA. Next, we will check the status of the air group services. Using this command, you can verify which all air group services are enabled on the AP. Here you can see that I have enabled Google Cast and Dial service. Everything else is disabled. Next, we will check the cloud config received on the AP. Show AP debug cloud config received. This will show you the last six batches of configurations received from Central. Here you can see the Google Cast service and the roles that we had allowed. Similarly, you can see the dial service and the roles that we had allowed for it. You can see the Google Cast service is enabled and you can also see the different service IDs under Google Cast, the DLNA media service. And here again, the dial service is enabled and you can see the different service IDs. Next, let's check the connectivity of our server and the client devices. Show AP association. This will show you all the client devices that are currently associated with the AP. You can verify to which SSID they are connected to and their VLAN assignment. Here you can see there are two devices connected to the teacher's SSID. One is the smartphone and the other is the iPad. And you can see the teacher's, sorry, the TV screens SSID that is the TV that is connected. So both the devices you can see the VLAN assignment as well that is 30 and for the TV it's 40.
Now let's verify what VLANs and roles are allowed or disallowed for the enabled air group services. Show air group service allow role. So this will show you the services and the roles that are allowed for each service. So here you can see for the Google Cast service, we have allowed TV screens and teachers role. Similarly, you can see both the roles allowed for the dial service as well. Next, if you want to see the roles that are disallowed, you can do show air group service disallow role. We have not explicitly disallowed any role. Similarly, you can check what VLANs have been allowed for each service. And what VLANs have been disallowed for each service. Next, we will check the server info in the air group cache on the AP. In AOS 8, air group operation mode was centralized. In AOS 10, it is moved to a distributed mode where each AP maintains a local cache of air group server information. We have two cache tables that AP maintains. One is the discover cache and the other is central cache. So the discover cache will be populated first if the server advertisements are allowed or supported. So let's check the discover cache and verify that it has the server info. Show air group discover cache servers. Here you can see the TV details learned on the discover cache. You can see the service, Google cast and dial. You can see the VLAN assignment and the role as well. So next you can also check the server entries learned by the discover cache. You can see the Google Cache entry, you can see its type, you can see its origin and the server Mac along with the timestamp. You can also see the dial server entry and the timestamp with origin details. Now let's check the second cache table that the AP maintains. This is the central cache and it is updated from Aruba Central based on the discover cache updates that the AP sends to Aruba Central. This is the cache table that the AP refers to when it receives a query from a client device. Based on this cache, the queries are responded to. So if your device is not able to see the server and you have already verified that the server info is learned on the discover cache, then we need to check the central cache next. So show air group central cache servers. You can see the TV entry is already here. You can see the service and the role assignment and the VLAN assignment. So the TV is learned by both the cache. You can see the central cache entries here as well for the TV. Here you can see the Google cast and MDNS entries from the TV and their timestamps. You can also see the record type and the origin details. Now let's check if the advertisement traffic is reaching the AP. So for MDNS packets, we can do show data path session and we can include the port number 5353 for MDNS. And you can see the smartphone is listed here and the TV as well. So you can see the source port 5353 and the destination port. And you can see the protocol number is 17, which is UDP. Next, we can check for SSTP packets. So we will include port 1900. And we'll have to wait for uh, SSTP traffic. All right, so you can see the traffic from the smartphone. And you can see the destination IP as well. So you can see the source port and the destination port. So in this way, we can check the MDNS and SSTP traffic, whether it's reaching the AP or not from the devices. So now we can check the number of uh, forwarded or dropped MDNS and SSDP packets. So this will show us if, if there are any MDNS or SSDP packets that are being dropped by the AP. 
So we can do a show air group uh, debug statistics. You can see the number of uh, dropped unsupported SSDP query packets. So the value outside is the total packets dropped since air group is enabled. And the value outside is the total number of packets dropped since the command was executed last. So here you can see 47. So there are 47 packets that were dropped since we enabled air group. Here you can see the MDNS uh, packets, that is the bonjour packet from the device. And the next you can see DLNA packets from device. So both are MDNS packets and you can see their count there. So in this way, we can get information about the SSDP and the MDNS packets processed by the AP. We can check if the packets are reaching the AP from the devices and we can check if they are being dropped or if they are being processed by the AP. So when you have personal air group enabled, you can check the discover cache and the central cache on the APs and you should be able to see the server with its username. So here you can see the username associated with the device and the services it's advertising. Similarly, let's check the central cache. Here also you can see the same server with the same username and the services that it's advertising. Next, we can check the available air group servers and username associated with them using this command. Show air group username servers. So here you can see the personal device MAC address and also the usernames it's shared with. You can also see the username of the owner of the device. This next command you can use to list all usernames associated with the AP. Show air group usernames policy. Here also you can see the device MAC along with its owner's username and also the usernames it is shared with. So these were some of the CLI commands that you can use to troubleshoot air group in AOS 10. There are many more commands that you can use to troubleshoot but I have covered the basic commands here. You can also check out our tech docs on central for troubleshooting air group which covers some more commands in detail. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you for watching.